Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, let's have some fun. Let's make a painting. Let's use Topaz Studio 2. I'm going to link the image in the description below uh, so you can download it and you can paint along with me. Um, it's a stock image and I really like the way this one turned out. The one we do, we're going to start from scratch. It'll probably look a little bit different because they never turn out quite the same. But uh, it's going to be a fun little image and I think you're going to learn a lot along the way. So without any further ado, let's get painting. The first thing we want to do, and it's very important, is duplicate the background layer because we don't want to be painting on this layer right here. Okay, so we'll just do a Command or Control J. That's the shortcut to duplicate the background layer. Then we're going to come up to Filter, and I'm working from Photoshop. And uh, we're going to go into Topaz Studio 2. We'll launch it, and the first thing we want to do is add an abstraction filter. So let's come up here to add filter. And the abstraction filter is basically going to simplify the image a little bit. So that's the first step. So let's click on abstraction and let's take our simplify size up. Now I'm watching the detail in this window here. I don't want to go too far. See, watch if I go too far, I'll wipe that detail out and also in the fence. So we want to be careful there. We want to take some detail out, but not all of it. So I'm thinking maybe right around there. That's step one. So our next step is to add a glow filter. I love using this glow filter and I'll show you how I use it here. I'm going to add filter. Let's find the glow filter, which is right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it in the dark here because it's going to bring up some like details and things, some lines, which will add some nice effects to the image. And you'll see here. So let's take the primary glow strength up and you already can see, see the lines coming into the image there. Now I'm going to take the primary effect sharpness and bump that up a good bit. And then the primary electrify, that makes those lines stand out a little bit more. So maybe maybe somewhere around in there. And now watch, I'll take the opacity and start to pull it back. So you can see what it's doing. It's adding this nice, really cool look to my image, making some of these uh, twigs and branches in these trees stand out and making the roof here pop out nicely and I like that effect so let's click the eyeball here so here's a before it and here's the after so I'm really liking what that's doing to the image and let me just look at it one more time and make sure I like everything let's take the primary effect sharpness maybe I'll pull it up uh, yeah I'll just pull it up just a little bit more gosh I think right around there looks really good now we're going to use the precision contrast filter so let's click on add filter and precision contrast and I'm going to use this just to add some uh, detail to this cabin right here so let me work with the micro first and just we're just going to watch the cabin here I'm not worrying about the trees although it looks pretty cool in the trees too but I'm not going to be messing with the trees mainly just the cabin so I'm going to pull that micro up a good bit here let's play with a low not so much there let's try the medium no, nah, not so much the medium. It's the micro that's really kind of doing it for me here. So I'm thinking maybe right around right there. And then what we're going to do is come up to its layer mask icon and click it. And now we're going to uh, come to these three dots right here and invert the layer mask. So it puts a hide all black layer mask on it. And now we're going to get a brush and... Make sure we're painting with white. So drag this transparency slider to the right. So we're painting with white paint. And this is the size of my brush here. It's pretty good. If you need to adjust the radius size of it, you can pull this radius slider right here. I'm going to leave the softness at 50. I think that's good. And so what we're going to do now is just paint that adjustment on this cabin and on the fence as well. And I have the edge of wear turned on, so it's going to help grab those edges, which is going to be a good thing. So see that little bit of detail pop, and now I'm going to pop some right there. And let's make this brush a little bit smaller and put a little right there. You know, I'm tempted to put some of these trees back here, but I'm just going to leave that the way it is because it's going to look nice with the paint. Let's see, we're just going to leave that. Did I miss a spot right here? No, I think I'm good. So that is the next step. Now let's click this eyeball here before and after. So you can see it just adds a little more detail to the cabin and the uh, fence here. And that's, to me, pretty much the focal point of the image. 
Okay, I was looking at my notes and then I added some precision detail. I can't remember really why, but I think I added it only to the cabin. So let's try it and see what happens. Add filter, let's go to precision detail. And I believe I just used the overall small detail. Pulled that up and you can see that detail popping out around the cabin there. I don't want to go too crazy with it, but let's just add a little bit of it there. And now let's go to this layer mask right here and right click it and say copy mask so we don't have to repaint that in again and now let's go to this um, add mass add a layer mask icon right here and let's right click and say paste the mask and like that we've added that detail in there now that might be too much so let's just take the opacity and yeah pull it back a little bit here because I think it's a little too much maybe Maybe somewhere right around in there, just to draw some more emphasis to the cabin. I believe that's why I did it. Now we're moving on to the impression filter, and this is where the actual painting takes place here. So everything else has been prep work up to here, so we're going to click Add Filter and come down to Impression. And let's start working with this impression filter. The first thing I want to do is grab onto the slider here and drag down to the bottom and find Texture. And keep dragging that slider down till you come to this where it says background type. Click original because you see these little white specks in here. Sometimes that looks really cool in an image. But on this one I don't want that. So I'm just going to click original. And those guys go away and that's a good thing. So now we're going to slide back up. And of course you can experiment with the different brushes here. Find a brush that really works for you. And I did that earlier, as I said, and I ended up with this particular brush right here because I liked the way it looked on these pine trees and things. I think it really aided well and into the grass as well. So let's go ahead and play around with this filter here. Now, we can play with a number of strokes, so we can click on low. Let's do medium. Let's do high. High takes a while because it has to think a little bit more. So I think I settled on medium. I'm generally using medium a lot because I think it's a good intermediate brush stroke size. And then we can play with our, um, or not brush stroke size, but number of strokes. Now let's take our brush size and we can pull it up and see if we want bigger brush strokes. And I think I do. I think somewhere right around in here. Now we can play with the volume here. And it tends to make the image look lighter when you pull that up. So I'm going to, I might just pull it up just a little bit, maybe somewhere right around there. Now let's play with the paint opacity. Okay. And whatever looks good, just leave off at that point. And I'm thinking maybe right around there. I didn't mess with the stroke rotation, but you can. And then the stroke width too, I left it where it was because I was pretty happy with it. And now let's just take the opacity and let's pull it back a little bit and see if we want to show any of that original image through there because that's a good thing to do is just play with that opacity just to see if you like it and I'm thinking maybe right around in there and you know what I didn't do the step but I might come back up and add another filter and that filter will be Let's try the precision contrast again, and let me see what happens if I just pull that up a little bit. Sometimes that makes your paint look a little, it makes the image look a little more painterly when you do that. And I might, I might just pull that up a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy with it, but maybe something like there. That looks pretty good, and that's, that's really what I want. The cabin has a little bit more detail than the rest of the image, so your eye goes to the cabin. I like the way this girl looks here, contemplating the scene. It's beautiful. I'm liking that. And then I believe I added another filter, and that was a curves filter. And I just popped a little bit of a, of a S-curve in here just to add a little bit of contrast. Whoops, that's a lot of contrast. Okay. I just want to add a little bit of contrast, like a slight S-curve in here. And maybe something like that. Now let's click this eyeball right here. There's the before and there's the after. So as you can see, just a little bit of contrast. And I think it needs it. And if you went too far, you can always come with this opacity and pull this back. And take some of that out. But I think I, think I actually need it in there. I might just pull it back ever so slightly right there. 
And at this point, we're ready to go back into Photoshop. So all I have to do is click Accept. And we'll go back into Photoshop. And here we are. So here's our before and here's our after. So we're looking pretty good. There's one final thing I want to do in Photoshop, and that is add some selective color to the image. So to add selective color, we're going to come down here to the adjustment layers icon, and it's the last adjustment right here. So let's click on selective color. This is one of the reasons I like the Photoshop workflow, because there's a ton of great adjustment filters inside of, of Photoshop. And the selective color is a great one. So let's come up here, and I'm going to work with certain colors here. So I'm going to work with my, uh, let's work with my yellows first. Now, when you're working with selective color, think of red, green, blue, and its opposites of CMY, cyan, magenta, and yellow. So the opposite, the opposite of cyan is red, the opposite of magenta is green, and the opposite of yellow is blue. So let's play with these sliders. And a lot of times I'll just, you know, I'll go to my yellows because I know I want to adjust it, and I'll just start to pull these sliders. I'll start with cyan, move it one way, and that makes it more green, so I'm going to move it back the other way. I'm looking for some warmer tones, and that's what I'm using this for. So just play with it, and you can play with all these colors and go one way, go the other way, and just and stop where it looks good to the eye. You don't have to get too technical here, like what is going on here, but it's nice to know that RGB CMY is going to help you. And let's just maybe, again, I'm looking for a little, uh, if I go to the right, I'll make things more yellow. So if I move to the left, I'll take some of the yellow out. So I want some yellow in there, but I don't want tons of yellow in there. Uh, cyan, the opposite of cyan is uh, red. So, or actually I'm moving it to, towards cyan that way. So if I want more red, I would go to the left actually which is kind of what I want. I want kind of these warmer tones in here. It was looking a little too yellow, so I felt I needed some warmer tones. And I like what's happening with this cabin here. It's kind of the look I was going for, like that warmer look, maybe somewhere right in there. And then I'm going to work with the blues, I think, because she had on a blue top or coat or whatever that is. So if I take yellow and move it to the left, I'll add more blue to the image in the blues. Okay, can you see that roof getting blue up there? And so there's not a whole lot of blue up in there, but I might just move to the blue a little bit. Let's go to the magentas and play with that. So if I want to add a little bit of a purple look to that image, I could add a little bit of purple, and it might look nice just to add a little accent of that in there. Now let's take cyan and move the cyan up. The cyan actually helps on her coat here. So I might take that cyan up a little bit in the blues. Now I'm only working on the blue color here. Is there any other colors I want to work with here? Maybe the reds. Let's work with the reds. So if I take the cyan slider and move it to the left, I'll add more red to the image. Because the opposite of cyan is red. So if I move it to the right, I add cyan. Move it to the left, I add red. So, just looking at it, don't want to go too crazy with it, maybe right around in there. And if I take this magenta slider and move it to the right, I'll add more magenta, to the, more magenta to the reds. I really don't want that. So, maybe, maybe somewhere, somewhere right around in there. And the yellows and the reds, so I want to back those yellows off. Ooh, don't like what's happening to my cabin there. It's going pink. So, got to be careful. I think I'll just leave that where it was. Back to zero. I think that looks pretty good. One last thing I, I might do here, and that is go to the adjustments here, adjustment layers, and let's get a hue saturation and... Uh, Mine's defaulted to set up where this uh, selection tool comes up here. So it's like clicked here. So see when it's clicked, it turns like a darker color here. So I'm just going to click on this yellow right here. And you'll notice it selects yellows. Now I'm just going to take that saturation 
and just pull that back just a little bit, just to ease off on that yellow a little bit there. I just thought it was getting a little too strong. Maybe somewhere right, maybe somewhere right there. Okay, so one last thing I might do is maybe just add a little more contrast. So let's come here, grab another curves adjustment layer. And let me just give it another little contrast bump here. Just to add a little contrast. Because I don't want to lose that contrast. Now, if you take this, see this blend mode is a normal. If you click here and put this on luminosity, it will not affect the colors of the image. Okay? So watch when I click luminosity, you notice the colors haven't shifted because whenever you, whenever you add uh, a contrast, add increased contrast to an image, you will also increase saturation. So if you don't want that to happen, remember that. Put it in a luminosity blend mode. So let's put it back in the normal blend mode, and you'll see. See, so you can see more color. So whichever you like. If you don't like that extra color in there, it doesn't look bad. But let's go back and put it in luminosity blend mode there. And I think that looks pretty good right there. I might just pull down on the shadows a little, little bit more. Maybe right there. So there it is. Uh, so let's take all these layers right here from layer zero, copy three. That's where we went into uh, Topaz Studio 2. And shift click up to curves one and right click. And let's put those in a group, group from layers. And we'll call this painting painting. We'll just call it painting. Good enough. Click OK. So now we can see if we click this eyeball, there's the before and there's the after. Pretty cool. Now let's shut off uh, let's shut off this layer right here. So now let's compare the two paintings. So here was the here's the painting we just made and here's the one I made originally. So as you can see here we got two different looks right here. And which one do you like better? I mean I like them both but um, it's, it's totally up to you. So you can vote on that. Do you like the first one? The second one, man, they come out different each time. So I didn't think I could duplicate it, uh, but it's, it, it, they're both nice. And I could also, if I wanted to, I could uh, take the opacity of this one and just back it off and let a little of the other one show through. So I can blend like two paintings together as well. So that's something else you can do. But I'm going to settle for that. I like it. It looks really good. So here's the painting we just made, and here's the other painting I made. So as you can see, they come out different each and every time. It's hard to duplicate it. But there's the two results. Well, there it is. I think I'm going to call this one Contemplation. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today, and I hope you learned a lot. Hey, if you enjoyed it, please like it and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. And also, please leave questions and comments in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for uh, joining me today on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see each and every one right here next time. But until then, happy editing.